MCM friends, please welcome to the stage the Oxventurers Guild! Hello everyone! Oh, the music again. No, we're not. Oh. Uh, I am Corazon de Mena, the human pirate rogue, and to put it into sort of comic terms for a Comic-Con crowd, like kind of as strong as Superman, cool as Batman, sticky as Spider-Man, <laughs> you know, all the good ones. Uh, I'm Egbert, the Dragon Ball Paladin, and I'm a bit like the Incredible Hulk, only not incredible nor particularly hulking, and quite even-tempered as well, actually. Not uh, even green, now no. it comes to it. If anyone's Yellow's close to green. Yeah, I'm good. a bit like the... Uh, I'm a green goblin, basically. Aww. The, yeah. Aww. And I had a thing with Mysterio. Nice. Oh my god, you do a thing. Um, I'm sort of like a poison ivy, but more war crimes? Fair. All right, Just I'm regular crimes. Prudence, the tiefling warlock. Aspirationally, Thanos. <laughs> Re realistically, more of a Scarlet Witch. Okay. A Scarlet something. A Scarlet Witch. See Warlock. that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm literally everyone else in the world, which. Um, Woo! Oh, Let's dramatic. Out. That's right. Uh, which, <laughs> but kind of emotionally, I'm just every goon Batman's ever beaten up. Oh. <laughs> Uh, we are Oxventure. If you're checking out this panel because you saw the D&D movie and you're wondering what D&D is, it's exactly this. <laughs> we consulted with them very closely on the script. Um, right, well, we should probably get into a little Oxventure, shouldn't we? Yeah. Um, this particular one begins, as all good adventures do, in a tavern. You're all enjoying a nice, nice drink. Okay. Do I roll for how nice my drink is? Yes, please. Nine. Okay, it's like, it's some pretty... It's pretty. It's like it's pretty watered down ale. Ugh. It's not great. Okay, fine. It's warm. I drink it anyway, obviously. <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah. Is there anything interesting about this tavern? Are there any sort of people with big question marks over their heads, or sort of glowing, letting off a light, or anything? There's sort of a man in the corner who keeps just like, just doing that like a weird idle animation, but he's missing his mouth quite a lot. Okay. Cool. Bizarrely, the staff keep topping him up. So, <laughs> a, co a full me? quarter of this pub is flooded because this man just. <laughs> Well, gang, what a time it is for us to enjoy an ale. Yes. We so rarely get to enough. do it. We don't do this enough, do we? We don't just, like, hang out yeah. and have a drink. It's How is everyone? Let's check in. Yeah. And spend time with each other's personalities. <laughs> Our enjoyable personalities. How yeah. are you, Dob? How yeah, really Dob, is that no, but really, how are you? The fact that you brought it up makes it seem like maybe there's something you want to talk about. Thank you for checking in. Um, well, I've been better. I've been oh. worse. I've been up. I've been down. There's a knock at the door of the tavern. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank goodness. There's a very insistent knock, actually. It's kind of, you know how, like, when a noise happens and you're like, that noise is bigger than the, the object it should have been made on. There's a real, like, <laughs> I go on and, the tavern wall. I go and answer it to avoid an awkward conversation about feelings. Yeah. I also do that, and we both sort of fumble with the door trying to get it open rather than talk to Dob about his feelings. I take Dob by the face. No, really, Dob. How are you? <laughs> um, I would like for Corazon and Egbert to both make me dexterity saving throws, please. Uh-oh. Oh, that's a seven. Okay. A 22. You succeeded by two. Um, oh, damn. Oh. Corazon sort of nimbly jumps back as Egbert opens the door and then kind of like he's opened a portal into like a train track. Just this enormous tentacle goes foom like into the room and slams him against the other, the other side. Uh, against the far wall, basically. Ouch. Uh, so that will be, yeah, sure. 12 points of uh, bludgeoning Whoa. damage, please. I rolled a d12, what are you going to do? Instantly, a, a real horrible green sickly miasma starts to spread out across the room. It's Sorry. Kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> it's always like this when he's nervous. This happens when I talk about feelings. You can have inspiration for that because it's, you know what, you shared. And that's the important thing. <laughs> well, you tried to share. Anyway, um, the room just sort of smells, it smells of uh, brimstone and uh, just dank and... Um, <laughs> I mean, to be honest, you've seen this, particu this particular tentacle often enough. You're starting to recognize the pattern pretty well. Um, especially when peeling Egbert off the wall, the tentacle kind of pulls back a bit, swings up in front of your table, and somehow with like all of the rows of suckers, manages to like cross two of them. Like oh. as if like... Uh-oh. Looking just kind of sort of stern, judgmental. 
borderline parental, I would say, Prudence. Oh. Hi. 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 I mean, oh, hail, mighty Cthulhu. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Greetings, Prudence. I've been meaning to call. Um, no kidding. <laughs> been very busy. I'm sure you know. You're very busy. I'm very disappointed. Oh, boy. Listen, firstly, do you remember a little while ago when you were just hanging around with a bunch of holy paladins? Yes. And I had to pull you out of there because absolutely not. Too holy. <laughs> the wrong crowd, I think you said. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And then you nearly get yourself killed in a climactic battle on behalf of paladins. Absolutely not. No. Um, I might have been okay. Maybe. And you know what? I would have been fine to leave it there, but then you missed bring your daughter to blah, blah, day. <laughs> <laughs> Explain yourself, Prudence. I was... Has it been a year already? What were we doing on bring your daughter to blah, 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 day? I don't recall, actually, but um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, mighty Cthulhu. I have begun to doubt your faith in me, Prudence. No! Worse, no. I fear your friends are beginning to lead you astray. Look how wholesome. No, if anything, I'm leading Look them astray. Look at the astray. apple cheeks on this one. No, I'm working really hard on them. I will turn them. Look at the greasy sheen on this one. No, he's nearly, he's nearly there. He's nearly evil. Nonsense, he's going to snap Prudence. one of I these do days. Some, I do some drugs off the blade of a knife. There we go. I got him. I got him. We'll get demonetized. <laughs> Oh, and now they're doing owl pellets? <laughs> Honestly, this is too much. Maybe I have been remiss in my warlock duties to my patron. Oh, well, so we have to quickly do something evil and sinister to save face for prudence. Quick, yeah. go. Uh, they can't do it. Here it comes. What have I done? Any minute now. See, I told I'm you. stuck in neutral mode. Uh... <laughs> I told you there's too much good in them. Quick, Marilyn, hit me hard across the good face. Neither good nor bad. A perfect balance. Oh, all right, I'll do. You what? I punched up. All right, Sorry. roll it. <laughs> On the arm. I think that I'm being mean, but it just like comes across as a buddy. <laughs> roll it. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. What do I? What do I roll for punch? I don't do. N no. Just make a, just make a strength con. attack. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ten. Ten. What's your AC, Dub? Uh, it is 14. Okay, um, you sprain your wrist a little bit. Ow. Kind of, or like, you know when people don't tuck their thumbs in? And you're just like, oh. eh. I say, yeah. don't worry, Meryl, when I've got you, and I drop kick dog. <laughs> All right, yeah, roll it, sure, why not? This is not how I saw this beginning, but... I'm sorry. For I'm some sorry. reason, I shouldn't have been surprised. <laughs> 16. Okay, well, that'll do it. Roll me drop kick damage. Uh, You've probably got proficiency in it. Yeah, 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 definitely. What's the, what's the attack dice on, a, on two legs? <laughs> two legs? Uh, let's call it a d6 plus your strength mod. And then double it for... Because it's two. Because two feet. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's six points of damage. Okay, you take six points of drop kick damage to the face. All right, uh, can I sort of play it up? Oh, what an evil thing to do! Oh, my face! This my is embarrassing, face. Prudence. <laughs> oh, I thought oh. he was really selling that. I'm sorry, so my Tikathulu. You know, we'll You're not going to take away my, uh, my warlock powers, are you? Well... I'm afraid you leave me no choice, no. but no. to test your loyalty to me and the loyalty of your friends to you. Do you need me to kill them? Well, we'll get to that. Ideally, yes. But I don't know. I've got a couple of hours free. So why don't we just sort of play around for a bit and see where it goes. And if, if it's getting on for time and we decide not narratively interesting enough, sure, kill them. Okay. We'll do them all in. Understood. Great. Um, so basically, uh, yeah, I'm going to set you a task now. Anything. Uh, oh, mighty Cthulhu. Well, you better go do it, because if... It starts to sound really weird. Um, if I find you lacking, you will have to choose between my patronage and your pathetic friends. <gasps> I'm not so pathetic. Hmm? I'm not pathetic. Sure. <laughs> You'd pay the friends, of course. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way you man, wouldn't. What will you do without your, without your patron when you choose us? It will be a very difficult decision. Mm that I will make when the time comes. I cast Zone of Truth on Prudence. <laughs> Can I resist it? <laughs> Maybe. It's not, it's not. You have to make a, some sort a of... Saving yeah, What's you, the yeah, make a saving throw. Yeah, make a saving throw on right. Zone of Truth. There are some sort of D&D mechanics to it. Yeah, I, I've made a you terrible mistake. you got a spell mistake. card right there. Right, a charisma saving throw. Oh, there you well, go. I got bags of that, so... Uh, it's a 20. Do I resist it? 
What's your spell save DC, please, um, Egbert? <laughs> uh, More 14. questions. 14. Right, yeah, you've, yeah, you've absolutely nailed it. I'll You're make fine. that decision when the time comes, and obviously it'll be very difficult, and um, let's leave it at that. She's telling the truth. Thank you. I know she's telling the truth. <laughs> I'm her patron. Listen, Prudence, this is what you and your stupid friends must now go and do. Yes, please. Over the next rise, there is a village. It is very picturesque. It is gorgeous. They are famous for their cider and their croquet and their excellent rates of literacy and many other things that make it an attractive destination for all discerning people in Gare. I want you to ruin it. I want you to convert it entirely to me. Make oh. it a horrible, writhing pit of people who declare Cthulhu just the coolest. Consider it done, oh mighty Cthulhu. <laughs> Dang right. We were going to ruin it anyway. I feel like that was almost inevitable. Yes, I have faith in you. You were just... Cool. Okay, well, here's a brown bag lunch. Bonk. Uh, <laughs> it's full of fish heads. Uh, mm. because, see you later. Sorry oh, about the door. Everyone say goodbye. Goodbye to Bye. Cthulhu. Bye. 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 Okay. Uh, and so, so that Cthulhu sort of leaves, uh, the, the door of the tavern is absolutely ruined. Like the door itself is in splinters. Some of those splinters are in Egbert's face. Uh, and the frame of the, the door is kind of like bulging outwards. Um, in fact, the, the whole tavern is starting to make some alarming croaking noises. Creaking noises. Oh. Damn it. That's different. Yeah. It's a sure, but no, sure, course. why not? Yeah, 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 yeah. His corrupting influence is slowly turning this pub into a toad. <laughs> so you better get out soon, because technically yeah. you're in the belly and it's going to start uh, di digesting you. Uh, okay, well, let's leave. Leave yes. the toad. That happens. Uh -huh. uh, we all leave the toad, I think. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, we, we all leave the toad. Yeah. All right, good. Prudence. Yes, my um, friend. What are the core te ten tenets of Cthulhuism, I want to say? Have hmm. I really never taught you the, the good word? Have you not heard the good news? <laughs> okay. No, but I'm impressionable. Okay, great. Worship Cthulhu, and he'll eat you last. That's good. That's very compelling. Wait, what if two people worship Cthulhu? Who does he eat first? The one who worships him the less yes. good. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Yeah, yeah cool. Right. You basically, we, I mean, you can pick up the rest as we go. It's, um, you know, you've been around me long enough. Well, I'm just want, like, what, we, we're going to have to... Okay, sort, right. We're going to have to pitch it to, the, to this village, right? Okay, chaotic evil. Okay. Worship Cthulhu. Yeah. And he'll eat you last. Um... And then it's kind of an aesthetic thing. You know, Cthulhu vibes, tentacles, darkness, <laughs> eldritch horror, the space between the stars, non-Euclidean space. Mm. So they're like a community element, and they're sort of bake sales or... Not so that. much bake sales. No. If you can imagine an evil bake sale, then you Just a lot, of, a lot of sort of community, isn't it? Like yeah. a cult. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can find community anywhere. These little, uh, these little villages, right, they tend to be quite insular and, you know, they're always looking for new gossip. If we could establish that Cthulhuism is, is you well, know, like a, a trendy new thing, like maybe if we have the nicest, biggest house in the village and yeah. it's all cthulhu -y. I think it's going to be a hard sell because we do also have to ruin the village. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, but yeah. we've ruined so many villages before. Accidentally. Yeah. Is there really that much difference if we do yeah, it on purpose? That is fair. I mean, villages basically ruin themselves, don't they? Yeah. yeah. I so. mean, yeah. I, is it good of us to have a plan? What if we just, like, turn up? I think that usually is Yeah, what, what if we turn up and try and save the village yeah, and make it up, better? Try yeah. and help. Yeah. Let's normally try and help that them. Genuinely. And then... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. There was a fatal flaw in my plan for this session, wasn't there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Failing that, um, I find terror usually works. Mm -hmm. Scare them until they have no recourse but to worship Cthulhu or okay. suffer. What was the name of the village? Did we, did we Do you know? It? I didn't catch the name of the was, village. Uh, Cliffhaven. 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 There we go. Cliffhaven. Uh, we could we could put a big non Euclidean thing on the cricket ground or something that you know yep. on the we croquet could get, like, field. Council approval for a non Euclidean sculpture. Yeah, <laughs> and like sort of get that through all the stages of approval. And then oh no, and... we could build it without council approval. That would have, they'll lose their minds. <laughs> yeah. They will lose their minds with Dog, the yeah. Your voice the people people can hear you. No council approval. Okay, so we go and do some basically eldritch miracles in Cthulhu's name. Like the non-Euclidean structure on the cricket grounds. Mm -hmm. And, and then they'll be into it when we start wrecking up the, the village and make it horrible. They'll hope, I mean, all being well, they will join us in destroying their own village. Okay, well, should we go and like, scope out the village yeah. and see what it's like? 
I heard something about cider. That sounded pretty good. I'd yeah. sort of like to enjoy that before it gets ruined. Also, chaos. We can do chaos, right? Mm -hmm. And we can probably do chaos in an organized, planned way. <laughs> That's the best kind, I think. For example, yeah. fill in the blanks with me, Egbert. Right. Odd numbers will be... Uh, even numbers? Odd numbers will be even numbers. <laughs> and even numbers will be... Even more numbers. Even more numbers. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah. The pub, by the way, behind you has continued to turn into a toad. Uh, and from the way it's now... Its eyes before were just kind of looking dead ahead as if it were just like a deactivated giant toad. But now they're kind of looking around to the point where you think it's developed a central nervous system uh, and possibly a prey drive because it's starting to eye you all up and sort of... A cast animal friendship. <laughs> all right, yeah, let's do it. Oh, let's bring the, bring the Arthur Toad to come. That's chaotic. Yeah, that's They won't like that. Yeah. <gasps> do I have a big toad friend now? Yeah. Toad of Toad Hall. Yay. Bring him along. Well, he is literally a Toad Hall. Yeah. I can't be mad at you for that one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> toad Hall. You yeah. can have inspiration even. Yes. Goodness me. Pays right, wisdom saving throw. What's your spell save DC, please? Uh, it is a 15, I believe. Okay. Oh, that is a 14. <gasps> yes. Um, so basically, you kind of, you see this toad, like his head kind of just like gimbals down. <laughs> And you see it fixes you with its sort of like weird pupilly stare. Yeah. And its mouth kind of like blah, opens. And you see this massive wad of a tongue. They're like, Whoosh. and just as it shoots out to like snatch you into its more and chew you up and eat you, it kind of just stops. Yeah. And then it's like. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'll skip to destroy the town. Yeah. And um, we're heading to that town over there. Whoa. Do you want to just head on up there and can we'll meet you there? Can we ride it? How big is it? It's big, right? It's big. <gasps> Does anyone want to get on? Should we all get on the toad? Can, do, do you mind if we take a lift? He kind of squats down and that's sort of like when oh, they go really flat. flat. <laughs> like square. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Right, everyone on the toad. Saddle right. up. Yeah. Let's hop up on that toad. Yeah, it's totally rad. <laughs> Thank you. <Whoa. laughs> Okay, it's, it's quite easy. To, I won't make you roll to climb up on the toad. It's like, it's got all sort of like... Warty. Know, like warty. And, mm. Yeah, it's, it's like yeah. a really easy bouldering route, basically. Uh, and you mm. can kind of nestle in atop it. And it kind of like straightens up and sort of... Insofar as it has no neck, it's quite hard to look over its own shoulder. But you kind of, it's like... Yep, yep, we're good. I'll give it a little tap. All right. It Hold on. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. Off. Everyone make me a deck saving throw, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Because this is, this, this is a toad <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> what is it? Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, what did everyone, okay. How did everyone do? 10. 10? 10, 12. 8. Oh. 11. Okay. 1. <laughs> <laughs> a 10, a 12, an 8, 11, and a 1. Okay, Four the good news is the toad is going to get to that village remarkably quickly. The bad news is none of you are on the toad anymore. <laughs> it just kind of, you know like the, the trick where somebody pulls the, the, the <laughs> tablecloth table off, mm. off a table? It's that. Oh, the toad no. Just, woo! Um, toad Howard, come back. And you're all kind of like, <laughs> what, what did he say? Toad Howard. I've called him Toad Howard. <laughs> Inspiration, absolutely sublime. Um, yeah, basically all of you are, are, are falling uh, to earth. Uh, Dob, <laughs> d yes. You somehow just got kicked <laughs> by like the end because it probably again like, dug in and went like whoosh. You fell back and then just like you didn't get kicked with the, the leg going outwards, but the leg kind of trailing. Oh, just okay. Like, pow. Right. like get hit, getting hit by the rudder <laughs> of a ship. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So I'm gonna roll a d12 again. That's a 12. <laughs> if I get a third one, I'll stop using this. All right, I spiral unconscious to the ground. Oh. I suppose. Are you unconscious? Well, I don't know. Next. No, no, it's if you get zero hit points. Hey, yeah, how many, how many hit points do you have left? That's how D&D &D works. <laughs> what, I can only be unconscious if I lose all my hit points? Yes. Right when I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your hit points tick you down throughout go. the day. When That's you what? hit zero, you fall asleep. So I can't be, like, knocked out. No, actually, you specifically have to be knocked out twice because the first time you're reduced to zero hit points, you, you go back to one. All right, I consciously spiral towards the ground. 
<laughs> drinking in every moment of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All your senses firing. <laughs> it's all right. There's almost certainly a haystack or a pond beneath me. Oh, I didn't think about full damage. Let's roll a d12. <laughs> That's a 10. That's too many hit points. Right, so you're all basically where you started, but there is now a toad rampaging towards a village. So technically the quest is underway. Good start. Um, can I cast Cure Wounds on top? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your secret. What if we were to save the town from the terrible toad, and then they'd be like, oh, thank you so much for saving us. How can we repay you? And we would be like, Convert to Cthulhu and destroy your town. Better. I have, a, I have a more chaotic alternative. Let's hear it. We wait for the toad to start wrecking the place. Yes. In a sort of kaiju way. Yeah. And then we show up and blame just a few villagers and say they brought this evil on this land. <gasps> oh my That's god, you should have called him Matthew Hopkins. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he hops. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And Stop, does terrible That's... things. <laughs> That's so evil. Let's and I love it. I love town. that for us. Let's do it. Uh, it's sort of like uh, late afternoons. So we're getting towards the golden hour now. So it looks really like quite picturesque as this giant toad kind of like gookish, gookish, disappears over the, over the rise. And uh, you sort of listen out closely. And after a few seconds, you hear a few sort of ah! screams from over the hill, which is nice. It's happening. Let's get in there. Are there any people around? Running away, for example? Well, from the screams, I'd imagine so. Oh, yeah. Let's follow the screams. Yeah, but yeah. they're over the rise. We ascend the rise. Oh, right. Go up the rise. Oh, by oh, the yeah. way, Dob, you're a whole five hit points higher. I'm really good at healing. You just hold him, you hand him back a molar, and he just <laughs> sticks it back. <laughs> it's like a Lego brick. Um, <laughs> Call me if you find one of the front ones. Oh. He's a nut. <laughs> kind of whistling when you talk, man. Yeah. Um, okie dokie. Let's crest that rise. It takes you a few minutes to crest the rise, but when, uh, when you do, you see it's not like out and out pandemonium. Uh, and you. Well, it's actually, a frog. Your. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, your first impression is that, yeah, sure enough, Cliffhaven's really lovely, actually. You can see why Cthulhu has, partic- has picked this particular place in order to ruin. Um, sort of at the back, there are like rows and rows of, of apple trees, there are some enormous orchards. And then there are some other fields for crops with like loads of scarecrows and stuff that have all clearly been made with love and like they've all got, you know, like fun outfits and they've got little button eyes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a very large ornamental pond. Um, uh, there is like a big town hall which seems to have been gussied up for some kind of event. There's sort of bunting and, and benches outside. It looks like there's a lovely picnic spread on. Um, and there's also a very, very large croquet lawn. And in the middle of that croquet lawn is an absolutely enormous toad. Um, there are about 20 people standing in a ring around the toad, some of them holding mallets, some of them sort of standing next to, to hoops and, and balls and stuff, and all of them are staying perfectly still because sort of the toad is just sat there like, Bleh. and it sort of rotates a little bit in sort of like a, a you know, an enormous amphibian sort of way. And it catches, seems to catch out of the corner of its eye some movement as like a local is holding a croquet mallet and kind of trembling and it just, what? Just, yes. just eats him mallet and all. Eats, eats the whole guy. And everyone's just there like, Ugh. and the whole town is kind of, a lot of people are kind of toing and froing and trying to organize some sort of response to this very large and unexpected crisis, but um, they're not entirely sure what to do, and they're not that keen on moving very fast because this thing's vision appears to be based on movement. Aha. Uh-huh. All right, so what do we do? We run in there? Make them move. <laughs> <laughs> Give them something to run from. How? How? All right. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm, I'm going to go and find a cider. I don't know what's going to <laughs> Oh, there's, yeah, you can see there's a very large cider mill. It's one of those ones with like a big stone circle that has a millstone right. and then like a, a horse with a trap and you feed all the apples in and blah, nice. blah, blah. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll go for a cider. Yeah. Two, three. Four. Yeah, no, right. I'm all right, thank you. You're right, you're good? Yeah, I'm okay. good. Let's get off get some cider. cider. I'll come back once the crimes of the war crimes have finished. <laughs> <laughs> Brutus, okay. what are you... What are you feeling in this situation? What's the, what's the play? Do you want to follow my lead? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Does Merowyn's animal friendship extend to her acquaintances? Does would, the toad consider me a friend? So. If you or one of your companions harms the target, the spell ends. Oh, well. Which leads me to believe that somebody can be seen 
and interacted with by one of the companions, and it wouldn't break the spell. So yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the toad was kind of like, going to eat that one, and there's like, oh, I guess she's cool. Okay. Right. These others can stay. Uh, with great and terrible majesty, <laughs> I walk into the center of the croquet lawn. <laughs> I say, behold, the great and terrible harbinger of the mighty Cthulhu. Oh. Thank you. Bow down now or be consumed. Right? <laughs> That's probably charisma intimidation, isn't it? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. You can make this at advantage because you've got like a 30 foot toad behind you. Mm. <laughs> 30 foot, right? How tall's a pub? About that. About that. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it works. All right. Yeah, that works. 30 foot tall toad plus prudence is. Oh, can I? Can I? You got advantage. Yes. Yes, I do. All right. So that's 22. Okay. Pretty convincing. I bow down, lest I be consumed. <laughs> yes. I got him. I got him. I knew it. Finally. <laughs> and your cow gods just <laughs> moves disappointed. Yeah, as, okay. yeah, as you press your forehead into the, the lush, well-maintained croquet law, yeah. you just hear a... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, right, well, I rolled for the villagers, and that's a five. <laughs> so I'm going to say, yeah, the, basically a lot of them just kind of hit the deck immediately. Yeah. Um, what does the toad do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do a wisdom insight check for this toad. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's the wisdom of a toad that used to be a pub? Yeah, to see if it can pick up on the social cue of, like, I'm doing a bit here. Mm. It used to be a pub. It Don't. saw a lot of... It's seen a lot of social interaction. Also, a lot full of, of a lot of booze. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, this toad's hammered. <laughs> Thank you, yes. I was going to give the toad advantage on that Wisdom Insight check. Oh, no, sorry. I won't. Better rewrite the stat block That's for the pub four. toad. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Hmm, <laughs> hmm. Well, what could be more evil and chaotic than then eating the villagers anyway after yeah. they bow down to Cthulhu? It's so. entirely fair. So they all it's kind of drop it. down as one. Some of them kind of almost jump up to go down. Uh, and like sort of, basically the, the toad sort of backhands three of them. And they just kind of like, tut, 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 get stuck onto the sticky bit at the end of his tongue. And he just, and just eats three people. They Immediately did. you can hear a cacophony of voices sort of muffled into the earth being like, oh, oh, oh. did it just eat some of us? It did. I thought we were bowing down. Why are we bowing down? What you said, Karazhan. Yeah, I guess they just didn't believe. Oh, I don't know if I shout from the cider. <laughs> 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 the, the cider mill is completely unguarded. There are like those, those jugs with the thing yeah. everywhere. Like, I'm feeling really much shouting over my shoulder. Wow, really? Sounds like they didn't believe or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you, said that, um, you said that not all the villagers were bowing down, right? Just... So, yeah, so there were, there were only, like, uh, about 20 people on the croquet lawn. Okay. The rest of the villagers were all kind of, like, looking from afar. They're kind of ostensibly out of the range of danger. Of the ones who uh, stood up, uh, can I look for someone who's maybe dressed a bit finer or appears like they might be in a position of authority, a sort of town councillor or a... Yes. A mayor of this... Absolutely, you can. Like uh, there, is, uh, there is a lady, actually, who, who is wearing kind of um, a very, very fashionable garb, but also ortho with a slightly sort of officious looking cut to it. It's a flattering like dress, but it also says business. Okay. Uh, yeah, can I, uh, can I approach her yes. and say, excuse me, are you in charge here? Well, I should hope so. Uh, my name is Celeste de Vries, uh, the village elder. What, what is that thing? Celeste, uh, my name is Dob. I will give you further introductions later, but there's no time now. I am a professional Cthulhu finder. And I'm afraid your village is in terrible danger of being attacked and infected by Cthulhu worshippers. You must take a look. Some of, the, some of them were already bowing down. You must urge all of your villagers who are yet standing to retreat with me, and I will explain more. Well, hold on. I, I, I have so many questions. What's a Cthulhu? A Cthulhu? Oh, well, well, you don't want to know. Look at, you see that? You see that thing up there? Yes. That toad? Yes. Well, imagine that, but it's like a million of them glued together. And it comes out of the sea, and it eats villagers who fall from the path, straight from the path of righteousness. But we didn't know we were on the path of righteousness. Oh, perhaps we weren't. Well, quite. <laughs> but, 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 but why us? Why, this, is, why this, has this toad come here? Is, is it drunk? It, why has this toad come here? I'll tell you why. It really likes croquet. <laughs> Don't listen to my assistant. The toad does not like croquet. Croquet. 
I urge you again not to listen to my assistant. <laughs> Can I lean into Celeste and just say very low, like, Celeste's nose starts bleeding. Um, can I lean in very close to Celeste and be like, These toads don't just appear, you know. One of your own villagers must have summoned it. The first villager eaten. Who was it? Did they have enemies? Uh, well, the first villager eaten, I think, I think it ate Edmund. Edmund, he yes. He used to be in charge of the local cider circle. Local cider circle? Yes. Hmm, the position where you might make an enemy? Would someone have been jealous? Make me a charisma persuasion check to see whether she's buying this. <laughs> one not great it's not a one <laughs> what's the next worst thing <laughs> well don't worry Darb. i found a one excuse me heavens she says <laughs> suddenly, keep your voice down hanging on your <gasps> whoever summoned this toad could at any moment summon more of them more of them yes such is the power of cthulhu we must find who did it we must uh we must find them and kill them, drive them out. Yes, I suppose that, that, that logically makes sense. I d just have one question. You said that this Cthulhu fellow comes from the sea. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh you better believe it. But that's a freshwater creature. <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> yes, now, and I look forward me. to it. Follow me, all uh, able, non-bowing villagers, and I sprint to a village hall that I assume yes. is here. Yeah, 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 there's a, there's and then a village hall. I am just a villager of this village. I will follow. Come, villager. <laughs> Arms full of cider, and I run. <laughs> Can I message Prudence and be like, all right, okay, I'm double agenting here, of course. You lead one faction, and I'll lead the other faction, and we'll go to war and destroy the village. Dob, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm really um, quite moved. Prudence. Yes. Slight problem. What? The toad's passed out. Oh, bloody lightweight toad. <laughs> he must be powering up some attack, I say. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone into a trance-like state, he has. <laughs> the people on the wall are like, a trance-like state? So I'm like, I might make a run for it. No, 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 don't you make a run for it. Well, I address the bowing villagers. You're safe for now, but there will be more toads. Why? Bigger and more terrible because, because. <laughs> Here it comes. Go on. My great Lord and Master Cthulhu have chosen you for a very special destiny. And that is. Being digested by toads. <laughs> Being digested last by toads. <laughs> hey. Do you mean if we do as you say? Yes. We'll be eaten last. And that may be in the distant future. So your best hope of a somewhat long life is to follow me now and do Eldritch Lord Cthulhu's bidding. Maybe a charisma persuasion check. Okay. No problem. That is a 24. I'm so into it. I'm like, this is brilliant. I've joined the cult. <laughs> I, I rolled a dirty 20 and I was like, I've got him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I suppose that makes sense. Yes, what if all the other villagers got eaten before us? And possibly we could find other people more willing and more deserving of being eaten than us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, well, this mm -hmm. could go on forever. There's loads of people out there. Correct. I'm so proud. We could go on tour. <laughs> Who is this? Who, who's, the, who's talking to me right now? Oh, uh, I'm Houndsforth, my lady. I'm in charge of the croquet lawn here. Houndsforth, you are going to go far, my friend. Yes, that's the plan. Far and wide, feeding people to the toad, <laughs> making sure Whoa. the toad's too full to eat me. Come on, everyone, this is brilliant. Hands We've me. got <laughs> jobs now. Damn. <laughs> is there a pay? Do you pay? No. Well, okay. Do we have to fund all of the, the culty stuff? Cthulhu will provide. Okay. Trust. Do we need to wear robes or something? Yeah. So he's going to provide the robes? What do you have? Uh, <laughs> well, I sort of just wear, like, jaunty, picturesque... Croquet clothing. Mm, it's not so sort of it's fine trousers and my braces. And Do you have anything horrifying? Uh, not really. Uh. Another man goes, oh, your technique when you're playing croquet. Like, ha, ha, ha. 
they're recovering from this quite quickly, I realise, but <laughs> they're a resilient people. I like you, Houndsworth. We're going to need some robes. How do we get hold of some robes? Well, um... Something dark. Something dark? Something creepy. Oh. Oh, we prefer bright and summery colours here. Oh, well, we did, I suppose, before we learned the error of our ways. Correct. Um, just pop an apple sack on. Grab one of the apple sacks from the cider thing. Just poke a hole in it for your head. Oh, thank you, travelling cider enthusiasts. <laughs> so I've run to the village hall with Dob. I'm not here. Oh, <laughs> there I'm throwing my voice. <laughs> How? Mage mouth. Yeah, I'm using mage voice. <laughs> I preferred Mage Mouth. Mage Mouth is funny. All right, you cast Mage Mouth. Sure. I've got a cousin there. Mage Mouth. All right, so we, so we know who is on Cthulhu's side already. I think that's a great idea, Corazon. Everyone should don kind of Hessian cider apple sacks. Perfect. Because they'll be scratchy and uncomfortable and, e- you know, that's evil. Oh, they'll be worse in than a way. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this, this place uses a traditional cheese press. Uh, so basically, the idea is what happens is... Right. I love talking about this stuff. Sorry, I'm just going... Oh, yeah. Basically, it's a, it's a big, smashy, crushy machine. And what they do is they lay down a layer of hessian and they, put, they shove on pulped apples to a, a depth of about six inches, wrap it up in cloth, lay another cloth on it, and they do that eight times, and that's called a cheese. And then they smush that, and they get like 50 gallons of apple juice, which then gets turned into cider. So there's lots of hessian around, but it's all covered in gunky, like, brown apple pulp. Oh, and all sticky. So, so they, look, they look pretty eldritch already, to be perfectly honest with you. They smell, smell amazing, which is a problem. Uh, but well, they not look for long, gross. though, right? Eventually they'll smell terrible. I suppose. Well, Give then them it time. It sort of smell like fermenting apples. which is quite nice. We can work with it. Okay, yeah. all right. Also, thank you for the lesson about cider. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm already in my hessian sack, by the way. Yeah, I'm so keen. I'm like, yes. I've lost the run of myself, basically, and I'm like, I'm totally swept away in this charismatic performance. I'm peering. <laughs> Can't even hear it. You, uh, uh, you can hear the moves, but they're not, they, they're not intelligible to you anymore. Mm. It's like that bit in Ye Olde Tale of Kiki's Delivery Service, <laughs> yeah. where the cat stops talking in a sassy and charismatic way. I'm peering yeah. through a gap in the town hall door, and I'm like, my God, they're already getting into cult robes. <laughs> this is further along than we could ever have imagined. They must have been planning this for a very long time. Uh, I look around the inside of the village hall. Roughly how many villagers have run with us in here? Uh, I'd say you've got a good 60 people. 60 people? Wow, okay. Uh, all right, I would like to start officially officiously even, sorry, sort of shouting and be, be like motioning to sort of groups of them like, you, all of you, get to barricading these doors and windows. All of you, find weapons. We need anything we can lay hands on. And then I turn to Celeste and say, Celeste, we must root out the enemy amongst us. Who was Edmund's nearest professional rival? Um, we all have enemies, Celeste. Tell me. It's no time for games now, Celeste. Um, I suppose it would be uh, Mona. She, she's the one who's in charge of the ornamental pond. Is uh, she in this room right now? Uh, Discreetly point her out to me. She kind of gives a little, a little point. No, she points with her elbow. Uh, you see a, a lady sort of standing in the corner. She's sort of looking around. She's looking quite worried. She's, she's trying to find a weapon because you just told her to find one. Oh my gosh, she's going for a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> She seems like a very unassuming person, to be honest with you. She seems, like, quite nice. She's got, like, you know, long brown hair in braids. She's wearing sort of, like, a green... Well, she's wearing, like, a, a nice green shirt, but then, like, leather waders because she's clearly taking care of the pond. Well, um, then, let me tell you this, Celeste. In my long experience of routing out this kind of thing, the more you can't possibly believe someone is a secret worshipper of Cthulhu, the more certain likely it is to be <laughs> true. Make me another charisma persuasion <laughs> check. Mm. Oh, my God. Okay. Dice jail. That, that one's 13. I rolled a two. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Celeste. Yeah, the only Mona I've ever met is a vampire, so... Yeah, people remember that show. <laughs> I'll board up a window, shall I? <laughs> Just listen. Hey. Celeste, you're friends with this Mona? You know her well? well yeah, everyone, everyone knows Mona. I, I mean... Did she ever talk to you about topics that you found unnerving or distressing? Well, does she have a room in her house you've never seen? No. I mean, I've never... Think very hard. Okay. Is there anything about her house that you've never seen? Perhaps the back of a picture? I would say if there's any bit of her house I've never seen, I'd say it's the inside. (gasps) 
Oh. We're not... What? I just... I've never been round. That's all. She's busy with the pond. Well, My then how do you know it's not full of tentacles? Well, how are you so sure it is? Keep your voices down. Cthulhu is have incredible hearing. <laughs> Celeste. Yes? You need to mosey over to Mona in the guise of a friend. Uh-huh. And then... Meryl, when are you with us? Yeah, I assume yeah, you yeah, are because yeah, yeah, of yeah, the... Yeah. yeah. Uh, my, uh, Meryl, when here, will help you restrain Mona. We're going to restrain Mona? Yes, so that we can hold her trial. <laughs> Is this getting too dark? Yeah. Let me know. Oh, yeah. oh that seems weird. Oh, Destroy a we... village was the brief. Why don't we just <laughs> ask her? Uh, Mona, she yells. Did you, is it your fault that, uh, that Edmund, the sighting circle man, got eaten by a giant drunk toad? Mona goes, what? No? Just, well, there you go. Right. I would like to discreetly cast Minor Illusion to make Mona's arms look like tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when right. she's like, what? No? It's like, Rrr. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was going to hide in a pond as an octopus, but that's better. <laughs> Well, I rolled Wisdom Perception for the town to see if they could see through this, and I rolled another two on a completely different d20. So that's just the way this is going, I think. They go, oh, my Lord, she's a, she's a one of them. She's a one of them. I can't remember the last time a plan went so well and I was so unhappy. <laughs> I know, yeah. This is unfortunately going off without a hitch. We should ask her to leave the village of her own accord. Yes. <laughs> All right, we'll do that. <laughs> Mona! We, well, yes? yes? <laughs> N- now that your wicked ways are exposed, you must What's leave. Going on? We ask you to leave this place. Why have you come here to punish these good people with your toad summonings? I haven't. I just dug a pond. Why are my arms doing this? It doesn't feel like they're doing this. What's going on? Uh, it only lasts a minute, Dov. Get her out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, I would like to walk. Uh, I'd like to walk over to Mona and take her gently by the elbow, and and lean in closely to Mona and say, "Mona, do not react. Celeste is a Cthulhuist." <laughs> <laughs> Just play along. Follow me, and I take her into a back room. Now I'm going to make loud noises like I'm violently killing you in a big fight. What? Okay, why? Okay. Well, well, because. Oh, I've stopped now. Uh, yes, no, that's fine. That was weird. I need Celeste out there uh-huh. to think that the, her tracks are covered. S- so that she'll reveal herself as a cultist? Well, no, just so that we can continue g- going about our, our operations. <laughs> but you said she's a cultist. Yes, no, she's certainly a cultist. So <laughs> why, are you, why don't you arrest her and... Because you need to expose the her, whole hierarchy of Cthulhu She's believers. incredibly powerful. Yeah. I want yes. to follow the money. Yes. I don't want to just take the small fry Celestes. I, I, want to, I want to get Cthulhu. But we have a barter economy here. I'm very confused. I wish to arrest Cthulhu. Now start screaming. Uh, all right. Let's do it for the village, Mona. Okay. Charisma performance check from Mona. That's a two. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh, no, heavens. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, I'm being brutal. Ow! Oh, I'm not sure I'll survive this. Can wow. I poke my head out and go, she's stronger than I anticipated. Corazon, get in here and help me kill her. Sure thing, Dove, I say. I'm Owie! slicking on some brass knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Albert, what are you doing with those? She's starting to get a little bit more convincing. <laughs> what are you doing with those? Just working you over. Oh. Corazon, you got your disguise kit handy. Can you cover us in something that looks like gore and viscera? Uh, you, you're the one with the disguise kit, but I can have a go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look at this. <laughs> when you're on the road for a long time, all your stuff gets mixed in together. It's like, <laughs> is this my disguise kit? You are kit? a pirate. I assume you stole it from me at some point. Yeah, that's true. Can I have my old disguise kit back? And we, sure. Yeah. I just dump all the red stuff over everyone. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, Mona, you're going to sneak out that window, and when I give the signal, which is an owl hooting, you run in and kill Celeste. What? Pardon? You're the o- village's only hope. Make me a charisma persuasion check. Fourteen. I'm not sure that's a good idea. I've never killed anyone before. 
Okay, Mona, I see that you're not quite ready for this assignment, and that's fine. I... You're, you're still a valuable ally in our... In our, okay. in our, in our... No, whatever the hell this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, just for the benefit of... Just, just for me, I, I'm sure I'm the only one here. What's going on? <laughs> well, I can't believe I have to explain it. <laughs> Chaos. <laughs> Discord. Neighbours turning against neighbours. Yeah, sowing the seeds of mistrust and suspicion. We going to, the plan is to lead. The plan is to lead everyone in the village hall, the sort of non-Cthulhuists, in a sort of great battle against the Cthulhuists. But we need to whip up some further right. and make them think that Cthulhuists yeah. are real. Yeah, which okay. they're not really. So. Yeah, we need <laughs> well, witch hunts. We need yeah, all right. neighbor against neighbor. So Marilyn, we'll continue, please. We yeah. need at least one Facebook yeah. group. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, like I can sort of sense what Dob is trying to do. And I admire it, but, but Marilyn's getting bored. So, because <laughs> she's, like, she's outside going, she's like, come on, doll. Every time your head pokes out, she's like, come on, I believe in you, you can do it. And then the third time the head pops out, I'm like, okay. And so I just point at Celeste um, and start speaking in Elvish, uh -huh. um, just in a ah, kind of way, like, what are you doing? Just, just gibberish, like, um, hey, do you know the way to the library? All that sort of stuff. And then I just turn into a giant octopus. Oh, that's good. Oh, that is pretty good. Uh, all right, well, let's make a wisdom insight check from the villagers. That is, that is a 10. That is, I'm gonna, let's use your spell safety C for that. That is well under. Yes. It's quite convincing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, now can Corazon and I... Kill it! You hear someone yell. Ah, can I come out? I don't want them to try and kill Merylwen. Okay. Can I come out and go, stay back! It must be handled with the utmost care. There's a man running towards Merylwen with a chair. Wait. Wait, good sir. Uh, we've just killed Mona on Celeste's orders. She said that Mona was a Cthulhuist, but now it's quite clear that Celeste was the real Cthulhuist. Look, she's turned poor Merylwen into one of Cthulhu's hideous servants. <laughs> Yep. I'm going to say that was a little bit too verbose. He's going to try and hit Merylwen with the chair. Oh, oh we're five. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't roll today, apparently. Uh, he just kind of he takes a swing. I kind of I guess he's uh, he's frightened. He doesn't want to get that close. He sort of swings near you. He's all just like oh, loses his balance. It's like uh, uh, uh. oh, forgive me, mighty Cthulhu. Uh, Cthulhuist! <laughs> ah, 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 ah. He's gonna try and jump out the window. That's not good enough. He runs into a wall. <laughs> he like, ah, like full like frog splashes the wall and hits the deck. You know what really makes me sick? Just wondering what those Cthulhuists are up to right now, right yeah. now, right like now, now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> On the lawn, the croquet lawn outside the village hall, yep. with the Cthulhuists, yep. the believers mm -hmm. in their Hessian garb, yep. we have, with Egbert at the head of the building committee, attempted to build a sort of non-Euclidean, impossible geometry type of wicker man <laughs> um, out of croquet equipment, um, cider making <laughs> yeah. tools, uh -huh. and... Um, and soon we're going to uh, force our way into the village hall and <laughs> bring out the non-believers and burn yeah. them in our wicker man. <laughs> I really admire that for a non-Euclidean, geometrically impossible project, mm. you're stuck Egbert at the helm. <laughs> 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 we need a shape, but we need a shape that's like impossibly, literally impossibly bad. It's You're bigger up, on the Dragon inside man. than yeah. it is on the outside. It's sort of maddening to look at. That's the brief. Got it. Okay. Yep. All right. My knuckles. You get to work. Well, I've never covered this in a roll before. Uh, <laughs> I tell you what, Prudence, you make me an intelligence arcana check All as right. a supporting role. Yes. And uh, we'll just have raw strength athletics, please, from Egbert. Fine. You may have that. That is a 23. Wow. And uh, Prudence? Uh, you said intelligence arcana. So, yeah. Akana. Yep. Uh, that is a 16. All right. So, between you, you, you do a bang-up job. In fact, it's such a bang-up job that the first one just goes, basically just like screaming tendrils of smoke kind of come out. 
Uh, and like, I'm going to say they seek, seek like, they pour themselves into the eyes of a few of the people in Hessian Sachs who are like, ah! And then suddenly they're like bang up for Cthulhu. They're no longer even pretending. You accidentally, mm. um, you accidentally converted a, a few people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're more careful with the second one. So it, it just about holds. But yeah, baby, this thing's non-Euclidean. As heck. <laughs> Not it a single Euclidean there. It so many there. sacrificial victims inside this baby. <laughs> <laughs> Slap the roof of it. It destroys a parallel universe. <laughs> It's so beautiful, and I'm just so proud. I don't understand it, say some of the people in their Hessian sacks. It's really weird. Does but it make you mad to look upon? Makes me feel p- kind of queasy. I'll do. Yeah. I'll do. <laughs> I'll take it. It's, right. my first, it's my first go, you know. Right, now all that remains is to break into the village hall and drag out screaming the non-believers is what's happening outside. <laughs> There, there is actually, we've heard a lot of screaming coming from the village hall, so it seems like discord is already happening in the ranks of the non-believers. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, in that case, I march over to the village hall okay. and hammer on the door. It looks like they've built some kind of non-Euclidean wicker man out there, I say, to the assembled villagers. Not now, man! Hold, sell us down! They, they've, they, they've managed to, like... In fact, it's not hard to pick up the guy who just ran into a wall. They pick him up, and they've also got Celeste there, and they've got them kind of, like, back-to-back sat down on the floor, they're like, don't you move! Can I, um, can I... Well, yeah, there's also a giant octopus. I just really feel like more of them will be panicking about the giant octopus. <laughs> so, and someone else is going to try and hit you with a chair. That's a six. <laughs> you're just, I think you're just incredibly hard to hit. Because, octopus, uh, yeah. Yeah, like, like that. <laughs> it's really weird that you're doing it with your entire body, not just the puppet. Can I, can I walk up to... Uh, uh, uh. They're all... Basically, it's a room full of people who are absolutely terrified and trying to quell the twi- twin elements of two people they need to restrain and a giant octopus that's sort of just doing a weird sensual dance. <laughs> uh, and, that, and then you kick the door in, I guess. Yeah, I cast Thaumaturgy. Okay. Um, and I don my Gandalf voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I do that kind of... The Gandalf effect, where everything kind of gets darker and closer all yep. at once. Yeah. And I'm like, um, <clears throat> who wants to go in our Wicker Man? And uh, who wants to worship Cthulhu? But in a Gandalf voice. What, <laughs> what do they do to you in the Wicker Man? Is it nice? It's it bad. Is, it no. is not. Stop up your ears, villagers. Do not, you! Don't. I look at Dob. Because we... <laughs> yeah. Cthulhuists. Yeah. They've breached the town hall. Oh, no. And, but don't worry. I'll simply arrest their leader. I walk up to Celeste and say, now to arrest you, Celeste. And I put a hand on her and I cast invisibility on her. And ah. then I shout, ah, she's used Cthulhu magic to become invisible. And then I lean into where I know her head is and go, Celeste, everyone in here is a Cthulhuist. You need to run. <laughs> 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 I, I, I don't know how to explain how an octopus looks confused, but an octopus looks confused. <laughs> what I'm trying to do is get Celeste out of the situation that yes. I created. <laughs> I don't want anyone to kill Celeste, but I also yeah. don't want to. But I also do want discord and disharmony because yes. that's the objective. Okay. I remind you. She's going to try and stealth away. I just, I've re- this is a complete sidebar, but I need to tell you that for about the last 15 to 20 minutes, I've been picturing you with Claudia Winkleman's hair. <laughs> <laughs> just an aside. Okay. That's a, okay, you hear, do you, you're sort of listening out for it, so you can hear Celeste being like, <laughs> but you hear her distinctly disappearing. Well, getting out of the, the range of hearing. She leaves the room, is what I'm trying to tell you. It's stealthy. Done. She got away. She's gone to join the infernal army of Cthulhu. Ready your arms, men, and legs, because it's time to fight. <laughs> hey, hang on. Well, hold, hold, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Um, so we go inside the Wicker Man, you say? Correct. Yes. What is, is that a pub? Not this time. Okay. Um, and, or... Or we worship Cthulhu? Yes. Yep. Uh, uh, what are the benefits of that? Well, spoiler alert, the Wicker Man goes on fire. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 
You'll be torn apart through a thousand dimensions and be on, be on fire in every last one of them. It'll be an agony through eternity in non-Euclidean space. Okay, that's all right, one option. Or, What's the other one? Or bow down to mighty Cthulhu, bask in his glory, and he will eat you last of all. Uh, oh, gosh, um, this is a lot. Um, should we have a vote? We'll have a vote. Uh, well, I suppose we should appoint a chair. Uh, Oh, uh, oh, thank you, Stuart. Uh, yes, uh, I've been nominated as chair. Do I have a... Corazon here does a pretty good chair. Se second. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, yes, that is very good. Uh, well, all right, yeah, do you want to lead the vote? Yeah, sure. All right. All right, you gather around, everyone. Form up, form up. Yep. Everyone who wants to worship Cthulhu, go on to the right-hand side of the hall. Everyone who wants to be burned alive in a wicker man across a thousand dimensions, go on the left-hand side of the hall. What, can we abstain? What happens if we abstain? I think uh, that's a vote for the Wicker Man, isn't it? Unfortunately. Abstaining is a vote for the Wicker Man? Yeah. Cool. Um... Suppose I'll worship Cthulhu, I, yes. I guess. Do I have to wear a whatever that is? Yes. Yes. Oh, well, hang on, give me another minute. Um... <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say, everyone decides to go on the side of worshipping Cthulhu. Mm. Uh, except for just like one dude. There's one dude just on the other side. It's like, uh, I just thought the Wicker Man sounded... I've always wanted to travel. And you I thought, what? well, if, if I can do a, a thousand different universes in one, uh, one round trip, then... Uh, well, it's sort of more separate bits of you go to each of the universes. How do you mean? Uh, that's impossible, isn't it? Now yeah, but it. by its very nature, this non-Euclidean wicker man is impossible. Oh, that sounds very complicated. Gaze on it and be driven mad. It does sound very oh. complicated. Uh, oh, is it? It? oh, okay, all right. Uh, if, if you want, I'll... Oh, no, that was meant to be a warning. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, sort of. All right, well, it's... Bung me a Hessian sack, I guess. Yeah, Hessian sacks for all, and we, we pass around Hessian sacks... Okay. I cross the village hall to Dob. Will Me you take the Hessian? Can I message Prudence? Yes, please. Like? Prudence, what do you want to happen now? Do you want to go in the Wicker Man for a bit? Do I want to go in the Wicker Man for yeah, a yeah, bit? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, you know, for, for fun. For fun. Will I be, will the Dimension Fire thing happen to me? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Prudence. I probably wouldn't be doing all of the mean things that I am doing right now if I didn't trust you and value your friendship extremely highly. So, yeah. You're going to have a lovely time across a thousand dimensions. Wait, you just said that that wouldn't <laughs> happen. <laughs> Who could say what's going to go on in the non-Euclidean space within the Wicker Man? All right, we fine. won't burn it. We fine. won't burn it. You're just going to go in there as a, you know, sort of threat. I see now that I have met my match. Truly, it was... The, the fight was... Ah, uh, I take off my sacred necklace of Cthulhu fighting and cast it <laughs> into the fire and put this sack on. All right. Oh, you're a believer now. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, sorry, that's the... Yeah, and I said take the sack off again. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I take Dob by the hair in a sort oh, of like... Oh, you're doing a bit to convince them. Yeah. Right, sorry, there's a lot to keep up with. <laughs> okay, I'm, yeah, I'm back, I'm back. I'm okay, with it, I'm with it. I take Dob by the hair, but in, you know, like a stage grab, you know, where I, I kind of, like, okay, ball yeah, my fist yeah. in your hair and you ah, grab it, and I'm like, time for the Wicker Man. Ah, it's like being gripped by a thousand tentacles. And I drag Dob across the steps of the village hall. No! Okay. And followed by a procession of Hessian-wearing cultists. Absolutely. And we stuff him into the Wicker Save Man. Save yourselves! Yep. yep. No! I'd imagine we built this wicker man with a fire exit, you know. So it's <laughs> what, for happy. safety? Yeah. So it's maybe like a, a slide that comes out the back. What, what does it come Let's out? say back. <laughs> Can you imagine if Edward Woodward was like, oh God, oh, God. oh it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the big pops it out the its fire exit. Like, oh, There's a wicker man fire extinguisher, extinguisher on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, okay. Uh, this Wicker Man is very unsafe. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose you both built it and you rolled pretty And I high. rolled a 23, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Yes, there's a, there's a fire exit in the Wicker Man. Yep. Yeah. We and I just whispered to the dog, when you get in there, just 
oh, try the fire exit. <laughs> but where does the fire exit go to? The, the, the fire safety dimension? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Cannon. It's cannon. It's cannon. <laughs> Just a big bucket of sand. <laughs> Can I, can I cast Banish and Banish Dob to the fire safety dimension? So good. Yes, of course you can. Of course you can. For 60 seconds. For 60 seconds. And then, and then we'll see what happens. Clean it on fire, wicked man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I wait for you to set it on fire, then get banished. Yeah, okay. There's a bit of ceremony, obviously, but... Um, sure. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll just start... So I'm inside now, yeah. right? so I'll just start generally screaming. Doing the old God, oh Jesus Christ stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, How is it in there, disbeliever? Uh, Bad, is it? Uh, is it too late to repent and embrace Cthulhu? Yeah, you had your chance. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then I guess I, I'm going to cast... Um, Egbert, you know, my, my loyal weapon, lieutenant. Yeah. My 15-foot cone of fire uh, at the base of the Wicker Man and let's set this thing ablaze. Amazing. Friendly fire. Let's do it. Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to say it goes on fire. You've yeah, I built this so. thing to be it's set on fire. Save, but he's not going anywhere, is he? Yeah, I mean, okay. I'm pretty sure... Where? I'm fairly sure you're smart enough to point your snout in the right direction at an entire wicker man. Let's you'd just, think. Yeah, you'd say, Yeah, no, actually, just roll me a d20. Okay. Three. <laughs> well, the first time... Uh, you just... Okay. <laughs> you just blast. You absolutely blast <laughs> a heavily inebriated, unconscious toad that used to be a pup. With your breath weapon. Okay. And it just... <laughs> kind of like... Uh, it, is, it, it is profoundly on fire immediately. Okay. Um, it bounds once right onto the roof of the, um, roof of the, the town hall. Yep. Uh, so that's on fire now. Right. And then it bounds... Eight would be... It's set a, an entire orchard on fire. And then... Oh, there we go. Okay. And then it bounds right next to the Wicker Man. And sets that on fire. Uh, and explodes, actually. <laughs> I guess it was full of alcohol, wasn't it? Uh, so. so full of alcohol. Yeah. It had an entire cellar full. Yep. Uh, of, like, high-proof stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, this is this enormous former pub. Just blah, 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 blah. Uh, blows up. The Wicker Man is, is now very much on fire. Wow, this Wicker Man is aflame, as I expected. But it's even hotter and more <laughs> intense than I expected. <laughs> it's also starting to collapse in on itself right. because exploding toad. So if you're going to banish someone... I'll give it a second. <laughs> and then... For dramatic it feels tension. like an hour. I discreetly... Well, no, not discreetly. I, I make sort of eldritch arcane gestures at the Wicker Man as if, you know, worshipping it, as if, you know... I'm, I'm so into this, but I am also casting Banish. And I banish Dob to the fire safety dimension. Okay. You can elect to fail the save, uh, the saving throw, I believe, so Dob can just go with it. Yeah. Um, could you make me a charisma persuasion check, please? Okay. Just to see how the, um, uh, just see how the villagers uh, take. Okay, it's a 13. Okay. It's not your best performance, but, like, it's okay. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of pyrotechnics going on. <laughs> yeah. And that covers for a lot of bad acts. And there's a lot of stuff on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you're fine. Dob, you um, at, one, at one point are uh, dangerously close to just catching on fire. And then in the next, you find yourself just floating. It's, it's, you're, you are in the fire safety dimension, which, as Merylwyn guessed, is just full of sand. But it's not like going up your nose or in your mouth or anything. You can breathe normally. You're just kind of floating. Everything feels very cool and calm. And there's just a voice in your ear that's sort of just saying things like, Install smoke alarms on every level of your home. <laughs> Inside bedrooms and outside sleeping areas. Test your smoke alarms every month. If they're not working, change the batteries. <laughs> Never leave a hot pan of oil unattended. Never throw water on an oil fire. And you're just, you're just chilling in the fire safety dimension. Just calming? Should we keep going? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Fire safety blankets are an important tool in any home. Wow, he paid the ultimate price for not believing in Cthulhu, I shout. <laughs> Cthulhu will surely be pleased. Yeah. We've done well here today, villagers. Okay. Cool. That's great. Hooray. Oh, praise Cthulhu. We'll yes. be eating last, I guess. We okay. will be eating last. Hooray. The burnings will... 
continue until morale improves, I guess. <laughs> um, two things happen in uh, fairly short order. The non-Euclidean-ness of this Wicker Man kind of kicks in and it's sort of like... <laughs> like, collapses in on itself and sends out just like a wave of like dark rippling energy that's like... Bang! And you see it like kind of striking the trees like lightning and um, it's like it's striking the pond a lot. Uh, basically like very big circle bad energy go make village shockwave horrible. type thing. Yeah, shockwave. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, for some reason I want to say Taurus but that's not it. Um, that happens and then Dob just pops back into being mm -hmm. at the height he was in in the, in the thing. So you're going to... Well, I'm going to roll a d12 because you were quite <laughs> high up. That's a three. You take three points of falling damage. Um, I'm going to make a roll to see if any of the villagers notice that Dob is back. Uh, Avert your eyes, cultists, I say. Look away. Look away. Bow. Touch Turn the majesty your of Cthulhu. to the dirt. Lower. Lower. <laughs> oh, they whipped the roll. And <laughs> I'd like to scoot forward and kind of like <laughs> over Dob just to hide him from you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yeah, Dob, you are, you are, in one minute, you're in a really lovely, safe, <laughs> calming atmosphere. And now you're winded and under sort of just a, a, a goo tent. I'm doing it for prudence. I'm doing it for prudence. We're doing this for prudence. <laughs> <laughs> Her, like, praise Cthulhu! Praise Cthulhu! A lot of the villagers. Yes. And then there's one or two shouts of, what's that though? Uh, maybe a wisdom perception check, please, everybody. Mm -hmm. Should I bother? <clears throat> no. Well, you know what? If you roll high enough, I'll tell you an octopus fact. <laughs> Eight minus one is seven. Uh, nine. Ten. Thirteen. Is eleven high enough for an octopus fact? Yeah, but it's a wrong one. <laughs> oh. Octopuses uh, are mammals. Males die after mating. Male octopuses? Yeah. Okay, I was worried. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's one, not... One day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our show, everybody. Um, uh, okay, um, none of you, well, none of you notice. Good. I go about my day. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Uh, mm. Um, so the cultists are kind of standing around you now. They're like, well, oh, uh, um, our new yeah, what's Cthulhu our new overlords. What's, what's our new day-to-day -day life going to look like? What we do now? Well, Cthulhu yeah. is never placated for long, so I suggest as soon as possible, after you've had, you know, a coffee break, we begin raising the village to the ground. We're going to raise the village... To the ground. To the ground. Correct. Mm -hmm. But then where will we live? Well, we'll be on a dark pilgrimage <laughs> around Geth, raising further villages to the ground. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but the toad exploded. Why are we going on tour now? There will be more toads. Well, when? There will be more horror. Tomorrow. Perhaps as early as tomorrow, unless we raise the village to the ground... We will surely all die a terrible, terrible death. Oh, that does sound bad. All right, let's raise the village to the ground. The guy doubles over, but then he's actually raised physically off the ground. Uh -oh. And sort of sticking through his chest, you can see a sort of like uh, spindly hand that's kind of made out of like woven bits of willow. But it's kind of, it seems, well, it's literally strong enough to punch through a man's torso and is now covered in blood. And you see him kind of being raised up as uh, what appears to be a living scarecrow is standing directly behind you. Um, and as you kind of look up, you realize that there are a bunch more scarecrows kind of in the fields and around the orchards, just sort of getting down from their, their perches and sort of coming along and drawing sides and sort of like leering at you with, um, with weird like, well, with button eyes and like cheerful, colorful shouts oh, and stuff. Oh, no. Uh, because he sort of sent out a shockwave of really bad energy. And it seems, ah. to have, seems to have done a couple of things. There are also some things crawling out of the ornamental pond. But we'll deal with those in a minute. For now, uh, could you all roll me initiative, please? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the consequences. They are here again. One. Uh, 
Does that mean I go first? You go first in the next round. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, Nine. Eleven. Also one. Oh, uh, okay, twelve. All right. Okay, well, the octopus is going first, then. <laughs> um, you can see half a dozen of these sort of scarecrows that are kind of like... Their legs are kind of elongated, and they're all really, like, they're not wholesome anymore. They're, like, creepy, like, st stilt walker guys. Like those dudes they have at Universal for no reason other than to make people feel quite uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, those. Okay. What do? Um, are any of them near me? Uh, yeah, there's, well, there's one relatively near. There's one about, like, sort of five foot away with a man on his arm. Yeah. Just sort of looking, like, looking at him like a okay. weird little flash puppet. Okay, well, I'd like to take some of my tentacles uh -huh. and grab his ankles and yank. Okay, yeah, sure. To make... try and make it all over. Uh, this will be an opposed roll. Make me a strength athletics check, please. Oh. Well, let's change D20 again, shall we? That was a two. Plus three. You know what? I'm going to stick it out. It's fine. That was only an eight. So. Well, it's stronger. Roll. Oh, okay. It's an opposed check. Cool. So even, like... You give, a, you give a gentle tug on the uh, scarecrow's limbs, but this thing was, was literally made to be supported by a pole mm -hmm. going through the back of its shirt. Uh, so, yeah, it just hits the deck. Cool. Uh, are you just restraining it, or...? Uh, yeah. All right. So it's grappled for now. Yeah. Can I, do, can I slowly pull it towards me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Towards my beak. That's fun fact. Oh, fun fact. Let's have a beak. Oh. Yeah. Have my, yeah. yeah like to slowly just pull it okay cool yeah you're pulling you're pulling a scarecrow toward your horrible moor yeah right and s slowly moving off of the dog like i'm kind of like pulling myself towards it a little bit so the dog can get out yeah it's kind of like a people aren't going to notice tom now <laughs> giant skeleton well scarecrow things yeah yeah no yeah i think dob can well we'll see what dob does on this turn which is now in fact okay uh how many scarecrow monsters are there again there are six in total Okay. Uh, One is being sort of it drags into an octopus. Like, are they sort of advancing or are they in amongst the villagers already sort of eating and hurting them? And stuff? They're, they're kind of in the fray, basically. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I mean, so, like, some of the cultists have wisely stepped back. Some of them are kind of looking to you for guidance. In fact, let's put the cultists in the initiative order. Oh. Nine. So I'll be going after Corazon. Uh, okay, all right, well, I will stand up and go... Ugh. Nice I, one. Cthulhu has risen me from... Help me message Prudence. Yeah. Help Prudence feed me some lines. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. Uh, <clears throat> thanks to Cthulhu's dark uh, resurrection. Thanks to Cthulhu's dark... Resurrection. Resurrection. I live again. To serve only Cthulhu. I live again to serve only Cthulhu. Th through, yeah, through, through eternity. Through okay, eternity. Through a dark and eldritch eternity. A dark and eldritch eternity. Yeah, go <laughs> juice it. I'll do, I'll do. I'll do, Dob. I'll do. And also with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, you. All right, you give the weirdest, most haltering speech. <laughs> which I guess, if, you, if you're an undead, isn't outside the realm of possibility. It's just like pretty close to the border of the realm of plausibility, uh, I, but sure. I'm feeling like AOE and stuff is a bad idea if these scarecrows are all up amidst the villages. Depends how highly you value their lives, but yes. Well, I'm not going to message Prudence. I won't like the answer. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try and punch a scarecrow's head off. Okay, great. Yeah, make me a roll. You're looking to beat an 11. Come on. Come on. Ah, 18. A yes. good roll at last. Very nice. Roll me some of that sweet, sweet damage, please. Okay. Uh, that would, uh, I'm pretty sure that's just a D8, isn't it? I think for me. Uh, and, um, strike, 5 Yes, that's right. Remember, you know what? Can I use my rapier? Would that be right? Yeah, sure. Go for it. Okay, so that's 8 plus uh, 9. Uh, plus proficiency. Uh, no, 12. Well, that's a decent chunk of damage. Um, you kind of like, you slash it across sort of like its face, so a bunch of straw kind of like comes out and then Ooh. tries to re rearrange itself into a face, like Bleh. you know like those toys where there's like pins and you can push your face into it and it gives you like a, an impression of, or a hand or whatever, it doesn't have to be a face but if you were to do your face 
and it was made of straw, it would look like that. Top 10 analogy from me. <laughs> really top draw stuff. Just fantastic. Okay. It's a sarcastic golf clap. <laughs> cool. Well, that was good. Thanks, now you all man. need to slowly stand up. <laughs> no, no, don't, don't. Please don't slow clap me out of here. Uh, right, Corazon, you're up. Yeah, so I'm thinking that um, we want to try and pull these scarecrows away from the villagers and leave them open. That's what we're saying to things like AOE mm -hmm. attacks and stuff. So I would like to cast Disguise Self and turn myself into a massive crow. <laughs> oh no! Scarecrows! I hope they don't chase me! That's how crows <laughs> talk. And then I'm going to sort of run off like this. <laughs> <laughs> Meryl went just watching closely, just to see how this one goes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay. Uh... Well, the Wisdom Insight check from the Scarecrows was a three. <laughs> yeah. So, what, uh, what would Scarecrows sound like? <laughs> oh no, I've been chased! Oh, let's chase a crow! Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, alright, let's see. Um... Okay, well, the one being grappled by Meryl and is being grappled. I was rolling to see if the other one would, would rather stay and try and kill Dov, but uh, it's actually... Yeah. You know what? Instinct takes over. There are now... Wee, five... I'm a crow! I love eating worms! Wee, I, I slept with your wife! <laughs> I mean... One of the scarecrows turns to another and goes, You what?! <laughs> she goes, it's not true! It's a bleeding crow! You're going to believe what he says over me?! Meanwhile, there's another scarecrow who's just sort of like gri gripping the octopus back and going, Let me go! There's a crow! I must fulfill my duty! I just stare. All right, well, he's probably going to explode from having a fatal existential crisis on the top <laughs> of his next go. We'll see what happens. Oh, it's now. Uh, oh, no, it's cultists. Yeah, I'm just trying to kite them into a big sort of group. Okay. Uh, I'll give you this as a freebie. Is there anything you want the cultists to do? Is there anything you're kind of directing them to do? Because it's their initiative. Is there, uh, yeah. Okay. You All can right. control the cultists. That's literally the point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take up arms, cultists, I say, and um, direct them to the croquet mallets, I suppose, are the most yes. weapony things we have to hand. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, have at it. Your eldritch god Cthulhu commands you to smash these scarecrows. All right. With uh, croquet you put them back in among the scarecrows. Yeah, I just thought of that, actually. Well, but uh, I don't mind if they get caught in the AOE. The scarecrows have had a head start. Ah. Uh, because they had to pick up weapons. Yeah. But now, yeah, we've got kind of like a... It's sort of like... Um, it's sort of a Scooby-Doo situation, really, going yeah. on here. Because <laughs> you've got the, a pirate rogue dressed as a crow going, Oh! <laughs> uh, and a bunch of inexplicably cockney scarecrows chasing after him. And then you've got a bunch of apple-drenched, hessian sack-wearing cultists chasing them mm. with croquet mallets. Yes. But they're, they're two distinct groups. You can't pun it twice! It can't be croak A and crow K. Yeah. I think. She... Johnny, I think it's just safe not if you don't say any words that sound like other words <laughs> for the rest of the session. Okay, yes, sure. All right, we can do this. Um, oh, I to let then go. it is the turn of the primary antagonists I was referring to earlier. One of them blows up on account of having an existential crisis. <laughs> now our D&D has no colour in the description, Meryl went. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I'm just trying to avoid puns. Johnny has stripped right. out any words. <laughs> in case they sound like other words. <laughs> the remaining members of this group continue to proceed forward in a swift manner, attempting to catch up with that one. <laughs> what have you got? <laughs> what is it? You've... Pro is a... <laughs> Sod it. All right. A bunch of scarecrows. They are hell bent on catching you, Corazon. I just rolled a nat 20. The first one of the, the darn session. You get like dog piled by a bunch of scarecrows. They do like the whole like slap, 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 slap thing. Yeah. Um, get him. We did crow. Oh, we got him. What do we do when we get one? <laughs> Hang on, I don't know, it's never happened. It's never happened before. <laughs> well, I don't know. They, basically, you're now under a pile of bickering scarecrows. Uh, but the cultists are safe. So if anyone did want to do any AOE stuff, 
Uh, it would probably be fine. Hey, but it's your turn. Um, well, prudence, actually. You both rolled a one. Um, are there any... Like, so, these scarecrows are pretty flammable, presumably. <laughs> right? Oh, I'd say so, yes. But unfortunately... <laughs> <laughs> How flammable is your crow suit? <laughs> Did a lot oh, of a magical disguise. I'm just me. I mean, we rolled the same in the initiative order. Can we, like, combo it? Or do we have to go? In? Yeah, no, yeah, sure, I'm into it. What have you got in mind? I'm going to banish Corazon to the fire safety dimension. Right. <laughs> no, I'm not learn about fire safety, anything but that. Sounds good to me. Okay, yeah, sure. I cast um. banish. I banish Corazon to the fire safety dimension while Egbert... <laughs> I uh, throw one of my bombs. Like the, the tiki bar dimension. <laughs> no. There's no time, Corazon. Like. Oh, man. It's about to get extremely flammable. You, the, the only place you want to be is the fire safety dimension. Um, I'm going to throw one of my bombs. So they use my breath weapon to do a, the ceremonial burning. Yes, indeed. So I'm going to have to throw one of my bombs instead. Okie dokie. But it should get real flammable. So it should be the bomb safety dimension. <laughs> should have thought of that, but I'm about to There was roll. no time to pick the dimension. <laughs> Never leave a bomb unattended. I... I <laughs> change the batteries in your bomb detector. <laughs> Do not return to a bomb once lit. You know. There that. we go. That's right. It. Uh, was it? It was strength, presumably. Uh, yes, please. Twenty-one. Great. Uh, they must make a DC twelve Dex check or take three D six fire damage. I mean, they're all. And it's a, all of them, presumably. Yeah, and they're all in a massive bundle. Yep. Yeah, so they're going to catch. Everyone's going to be a light after this. Oh, I'm just saying I don't see the saving throw going particularly well. Yeah, yeah, fair. Tell you what, I'll do one for each of them. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Uh, I rolled a 19, so one of them's like, oh, and kind of like tries to throw himself backwards. Okay. Uh, one of them rolled a 6, uh, working down through the pile. Uh, that one, the third one down, rolled a 1. So Great. I'm going to say he just grabs hold of the other two. <laughs> Fiercely. Like, never let me go! Great. <laughs> Do I get all extra damage because they're so flammable? They're the most flammable enemies we've. They do have a damage, a damage vulnerability of fire. Yes, so yes. this damage is doubled. Great, perfect. So roll it, then double it, and then we'll halve it for one of them. Two, six is eight, and uh, eleven. Eleven is times two. Twenty-two. Yep. And then one of them just takes eleven. Uh, okay. Yeah, they're all profoundly on fire. They're cool. all dead, but they're having an awful time. Great. <laughs> I would like to uh, use my ability to attack twice to do exactly the same thing again. Hey. Have bombs, will travel. You did. If it works, it works. You, you did a class what do you want? related thing. I know. You can roll Take with advantage. In, folks. Hey. I'm so proud of you. Roll it. Roll with advantage. <laughs> How could I say no to that? Um, so I roll again, right? Yeah. Uh, that is a less impressive 14 this time. Okay, uh, it still hits. Mm -hmm. So roll me damage again. Yep. Uh, six, uh, four is ten, and five is fifteen this time. And then I double it, right? You double it. Okay, great. Please. Okay, so if imagine we've all we've all heard ye tale of uh, ye second Terminator. <laughs> if the first bomb is like it gets it gets the scarecrows to the skeleton holding on to the fence face. Yeah. The second bomb is just the that like turns Brilliant. them all to instantly uh, carbonized. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's quite uh, good. yeah, you've just destroyed the entire pile of uh, scarecrows. Um, at which point, I'm going to say, I was. Hmm. Hmm. I'll tell you what. I'll make a. I'll make a. I'll make a check to see if. Okay. No. I was sorry. I was making a saving throw to see if they they would get into the fight. <laughs> I think sensibly they aren't. There were some la really large sort of like toad creatures with massive long talons and big wide mouths of cruel teeth, sort of glomming their way out of the ornamental ponds to come and destroy all of you. <laughs> and they're now just kind of <laughs> <laughs> slinking back into the ornamental pond. You better run. Um, is anyone else curious to see what would happen if I went now and got into the exact position that Corazon was in, in the exact place when he left? Yeah. I wasn't, now I am. <laughs> we've, yeah. ta we've talked about this. We it's telefragging, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you'd get telefragged by me. All right. You'd explode. Okay. Well, I won't do that, Ben. Okay. Lest I explode. 
You could stand like just to the left and see if our arms get entwined or something. Or you could try and jump and see if you can land on his shoulders as he comes back. I want to do that. <laughs> All right. Sure. Fine. Right. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> I mean, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Corazon, at first, we, you know, it was just like, and then you are just a crow floating in an endless sea of sand. Mm -hmm. And a voice says things like, do not overload electrical sockets and watch out for faulty and overheating electrical equipment and wiring slash cables. And then you, you, you come back in uh, just as Dob, who was occupying the exact space you were. 55, 56, <laughs> 57. What comes after that? <laughs> Make me a dense acrobatics check, please. <laughs> yeah. It's dex acrobatics, though. Which Man, is... I'm, I'm buying a dog action figure on my way out. Those are going to be worth a lot more. <laughs> they are going to be but, worth so much About to become a limited edition. Yeah. Uh, did you have inspiration? Just no... No reason why I asked. <laughs> okay. Dirty 20. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was about to fuse you into a sort of half-orc... Half-crow. Half, 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 half orc <laughs> half-man centaur thing. For the rest of the session. Oh, great. Thanks a lot, Egbert. <laughs> <laughs> You're always asking me to engage with the mechanics of D&D. This is what happens. Yeah, and now I'm not a dob centaur. It's rules as written. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what half would you have been, Corazon? <laughs> Both. <laughs> um, I assume. It's very impressive as the apparent zombie dob kind of just goes, what, what's this? And then just like, da-da, appears on... Corazon's shoulders. On a crow's shoulders. You're still a crow. Yeah, on a crow's shoulders. <laughs> now fly, my dark servant of Cthulhu. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, now, are any of these flying? No. You've got Featherfall. Yeah, but that's for going down. Who can propel oh. Corazon far, far into the sky? Who has that magic? Uh, okay, I cast Dancing Lights and then just sort of run fast. <laughs> I hope it looks just like, like a bird. <laughs> I hope it looks magical and cool. <laughs> okay. Um, We're doing this for prudence. <laughs> so you cast dancing lights, and then basically the villagers just see like a crow, just like fold back his wings and just like Naruto run <laughs> across a croquet lawn that was covered in still flaming gobbets of giant toad. Um, well, yeah, while well, the zombie just sort of bobbles around on the top. Oh, I think we've sent a powerful message today, Dob. I somehow can't imagine Chris Pine doing this. Yeah, yeah, you watch, Chris... this exact thing will be in the sequel. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, I didn't yeah. have any TM, 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 do not steal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chris Pine will be like, oh, I haven't even seen Oxventure. And I'm like, yeah, right, mate. I message Prudence. Prudence. Oh, hi, hi. I don't have loads of experience with things being destroyed by Cthulhu. Mm -hmm. How are we doing? We're doing great. Okay. Stay yeah. the course. We're going to continue raising the village. We're going to build an Eldritch temple in the village hall. That oh. seems like a lot of work. When you say we're sort of done now, like we go back to Cthulhu and he'll be happy with all this. Well, we're going to instruct the villagers to do it in our stead. Right, good. Because I don't want to build anything. That sounds like hard work. Hey, we've got people to help us with building. Yeah. Yeah. But but we've got portable people to help us with building. Uh, wait, are you asking me to summon the skeletons to construct a building? <laughs> because I won't do it. <laughs> Again. Fool <laughs> me once. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine too. I feel like the... Cultists are in a good place to self-manage, to self-govern, um, and yeah. We, self-govern? We... Is, that, is that chaotic? Sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to crit criticise your Cthulhu. Let's see how it goes. Um, I'd like to dispatch the cultists. I'd like to dispatch the cultists. No, I'd, I'd like to... Kill them. Not dispatch off, dispatch. <laughs> it's a different... like the, the other kind, I would like to send them to burn their own homes 
and some of them, whose homes are already on fire, to set up the village hall as a kind of eldritch temple. Where's Houndsforth, my good friend? I'm here, my lady! He says, good. inside good. a sack. Good. <laughs> he's really committed to the bit. Good. Cthulhu is well like, pleased Like he's got today. lost changing the duvet cover. <laughs> <laughs> Sing praise to Cthulhu! Who is pleased this day? Who's are? We need these houses burned to the ground. Of course, vile houses! Not Thanks. nice at all. And we need the village hall turned into a, a dark temple oh. to our lord. Okay, yeah, sure. Think you can manage that? Uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, just, I, I, I shall go uh, torch the house I, I grew up in, and then, uh, well, I guess we could string some of these toad guts around in the hall. That, that sounds pretty... My man, I love your initiative. Pretty eldritch, yeah, no, okay. You'll make, what, what do we have, priests, vicars? Uh, you'll, you'll make Eldritch Priest for this. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> you get digested in one of the better stomachs. Oh, that does sound nice, actually. <laughs> uh, okay, well, uh, yes, all right. Um, sure. Uh, no, okay. He grabs a flaming torch and starts sort of like sad walking towards... A nice, picturesque-looking house. Do it without the attitude, I say. <laughs> oh, uh, please, please, Cthulhu. Uh, uh, ha! And he, thro- he throws a flaming torch onto the thatch roof of the house he grew up in, and it catches fire. He goes, oh, I feel so much better. <laughs> Close Hooray! enough. All right, I think Corazon is right. I think we should check in with um, Cthulhu. To see how we're going. You know, see how we're going. Running, running great check in, touch base. Rats. Let's circle back, circle back around on the uh, <laughs> patron. Run it on the flagpole, yeah. 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 which tentacle salute. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So talk about some action points going forward, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll sort of montage this bit. The, the villagers duly set fire to all of their homes and everything they've ever owned. And like the cider mill and uh, their, their s- store of food for the winter and all that kind of stuff. They really just get rid of all of it. You know, in that kind of like, I'm selling all my possessions and moving to a monastery kind of thing. Um, and then, yeah, sure enough, they just sort of scoop up all of the bits of exploded toad and, um, well, just, just general grim viscera from around the place. And, uh, yeah, they sort of just string it all up in, in the hall. Uh, so there's like gut bunting now. <laughs> They're like, oh, so the temple to Cthulhu awaits you, I'm sure. If you called him, he wouldn't hesitate to answer. Do it without the attitude. Oh, he'll <laughs> sing the hooray. Surely better, he better. Will answer you. All right, I'd like to. We... Egbert, do you, you don't want to be the moral centre of the party or anything? Just. Yeah, I'm starting to sort of come. Like, uh, oh, thank God, someone is going to be the moral. The centre. Um, you know, the the mania has has sort of lifted, and I'm like, oh, I don't feel good about this at all. Um, but really, I feel like I'm outvoted as well. So. Meryl when is no thoughts, only vibes. <laughs> Are you Fine. still a giant octopus? Yeah. Good. No <laughs> thoughts, only slime. They don't really produce slime. Ignore me. I'd like to um, withdraw with my cronies. Um, mm-hmm. Cronies? No! no! <laughs> you, see, you see what happens. No! When this is on YouTube, you need to go back and watch Jane's face in slow motion there. As she <laughs> that was a great view. I'm sorry. <laughs> <sighs> like to withdraw mm-hmm. into the yeah. newly built, newly decorated temple cath- to Cthulhu with mm-hmm. the toad gut smeared on the walls, close the doors, yeah. and um, hail Cthulhu. Mm-hmm. Raise him. A tentacle bursts up through the floorboards. Prudence. Good job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, for a minute you had me worried. I nearly stepped in there. You almost went a bit far even for me. <laughs> <laughs> But I can't believe it, one of your, your silly friends, course corrected. He makes a fine cultist. Do they want to become warlocks, all of them? No, I don't want to do this ever again. It was horrible. Well, it yeah. would only be a lifetime of servitude to me. I'll eat you last. Oh, I, we, yeah, I'm sort of wishing the world would swallow me up right now. Do none so. of you want to be a warlock? Prudence, um, I think I speak for the rest of the group when I say that what we want to be is your friend because we hold your friendship very dearly and as such today we've all done a lot of things that will haunt us yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at you but all I can see are the actions I committed today writ large across 
the, my my eyes. Yeah, I shake my crow head. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you for the offer, but I think as long as we've helped you out today, I think that's probably what we all wanted to get out of this and and no more. Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. I appreciate that every time you look at me, you are going to be haunted by your deeds here today. And to Cthulhu, I say that is a respectful no thank you, um, my eldritch master. Okay, would you and like I... me to kill them all? Oh, that's a long pause. Uh, yeah, that's too wow. long a pause. No, 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 no. All right. No, no, well... thank, no thank, respectfully no thank you, my eldritch master and patron. Wow. For sure. Um, Your character growth. Well, <laughs> I feel you've done a very bad thing here today, and that pleases Cthulhu. So I guess we're still cool. Can I have, I have a question. high five from the... My hand is thoroughly, like, slimy, and... Yep. I love it. Now okay. that Cthulhu's pleased, mm -hmm. do you think Cthulhu would notice if we made everything nice again? <laughs> Well, I was going to say, if we could, like, rebuild the village in, on the sly. <laughs> we could sort of, like, get Cthulhu on a technicality there, because we did do we the did thing. Do we the did, thing. We just then did some separate... Oh, yeah. he's back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Ah. No, I never left. I'm just a crow. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, uh, this whole uh, thing was meant to be a test, and you passed the test. These foolish mortals mean nothing to me. If you want to make their lives better... Well, Prudence, I suppose I could turn a blind eye on this one. Anyway, <laughs> I'm off to sink a ship. Bye! <laughs> okay, I would like to turn back from being a crow and be like, Okay, everyone, amazing response to the Cthulhu drill. <laughs> <laughs> that was great, everyone. We only lost Edmund. Yep. <laughs> Uh, with the three oh, others. Oh, oh, oh. Moni, you can come out now. <laughs> She's long gone. <laughs> Surely. Celeste runs in with a sword. <laughs> 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 now, here's a real, a real champ. A oh, great job done. in the Cthulhu drill. Kill them all. We're killing them all. No, so no, it was a drill. It was a drill. It was just what? a drill. Just a drill. It was just a drill, and you proved yourself so prepared and so ready. In fact, so ready that we're going to... That we, the Cthulhu Readiness Department, are going to award you the highest honor we have, the Medal of Cthulhu Readiness. And here it is, and I reach into my pockets and produce... 50 foot of infantry. <laughs> <laughs> this rope symbolizes... The, the bonds, bonds. The bonds yeah. that you villagers have created. And as I pass it over, I would like to cast the biggest calm emotions... <laughs> On this whole situation, if that's okay. Yes, I think I would say that that would be a very good idea. Let's see what level spell slots is coming out of. I've forgotten calm emotions, so I'm just going to roll a d20 if that's right. Sorry, that's it's my fine. bad. Seven, though. <laughs> okay, well, uh, you didn't need to roll a d20 at all. Oh, so okay, what's your spell save DC? Oh, uh, uh, 16. Well, I rolled yet another two. <laughs> Dang! So... Poor Celeste. Just like, oh... What's the meaning of... Thank you so much. It's been really instructive, actually. And, um, well, the ornamental ponds still here. We've still got that, I suppose. Yep. It's full of horrifying creatures now, but... Yep. Oh. There's still a little cider left, I say, clanking with cider bottles. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. Oh, all in all, this has been really cathartic, actually. Well, you all did great. No, don't, no, 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 no. It... no. No, well, go on, actually, go on. Let's hear it. Cth Cthulhu tick? Uh, There's been Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, Bang. we've got no homes anymore or really anything else, but maybe we can head over to over the, the hill to that nice pub. They've got enough beds to put some of us up, I'm sure, at uh. least for a few days, while we'd start to rebuild. That'll be nice. Uh, it's a charming, be, uh... charming pub. Would you like to come with us? Uh, we're yeah. going the other way, actually. We're, yeah, we, we, oh, yeah. You, we you were, go and get a round in, and we'll join you. Yeah, oh, we've okay. got to do more Cthulhu preparedness over at the next village. Oh, of course, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. All right, well, uh, this was unexpected. Um, do, what do we owe you? Do we owe you anything? What Please, do we owe you? no. You, it's a public service, yeah, right? It's a, public a, service. a simple hundred gold pieces will yeah. suffice. <laughs> oh, um, 
Well, I said, okay, I'm, we'll take it inside her. Uh, sure, I mean, you've, hmm, we did burn down the mill. Can we owe you? Can we just, can we owe you? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 okay, sure. we'll be back. Hey. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, great. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna pray, uh, to my, to my cow day. Oh, this ought to be Apo- good. Oh, apologetically. Go. And be like, is there anything you can do for these people? Yeah. When you're like, I feel really bad. I got caught up in the moment. There were some very charismatic performances. Um, and, and, you know, like the Hessian sack. I just seemed like super, like, yeah. suited to my whole deal. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm really sorry. And I'll make it up to you. But if there's anything you can do to help get this village kind of ship shape again. He's sending a hey you up to prayer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the twin sons of Geth rotates. Yeah. It's kind of getting on for, for evening now, so it kind of it's low over the horizon. And it turns and gives you just a real, like a real stinky look. Just like, yeah, I'm sorry. I just got overexcited. <laughs> <laughs> well, mm-hmm. look who came crawling back. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, it seems like you're very good at converting other people to religions. Just not <laughs> mine. Yeah, uh, I'm going to step it up. I promise. What, what, what was that you wanted? An enormous town-wide miracle? <laughs> yeah, if it's, I haven't asked for much recently. Nor have you given much recently. Hmm, yeah. No, I understand. I'm sorry. I'll build one barn. Come on, some houses. <laughs> Come on! Come on! <laughs> now we're haggling the miracle. Yeah. It's not very, a barn's not very miraculous, is it? 40 loaves. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Fine. <laughs> Maybe that's why no one worships him. He's a pushover. <laughs> it's like, oh, why not? Ooh. The cow god's kind of like, Bruh! just like shrieks a bunch of buildings into existence. It basically rebuilds the town. Yes. Would you like me to get rid of the horrifying monsters in the pond? I mean, if you're offering, yeah. Why yeah. not? In for a penny. <laughs> it turns them all into purple cows. Okay, oh, nice. A bunch of purple cows running around now. Oh, that'll be like cows. a tourist attraction as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start so, a dairy and, yeah. Lays, vashes, moves. Yep. yep. <laughs> exactly. Good. Thanks. Anyway. Sorry, oh. lavash move. Please continue. All right. Do some conversion if you can sometime, Egg, but... All right. <laughs> well, this right. miracle will give me a bit of leverage, you know, to, to convert the villagers again. Real whiplash. <laughs> Go from Cthulhu worship now to worshipping the purple oh, cow. Egbert. Everyone oh. did very well in the Lavash Mauve prepare industry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everyone. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, peace. <laughs> bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. Love you. Um, know you. Know you. Bye. And then sort of as, as the twin sons of guests start, start to sort of uh, to, to go down. Um, yeah, you sort of reflect on the community you destroyed, mm. and then reflect on the rebuilt, worst things you've having ever sent done. all of the people who lived there out of the community. I guess. Oh no, they were going of their own accord. Oh, they'll be fine. They're off to the pub. I know you said you didn't want to be warlocks, everyone, but in my heart, you're all warlocks. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a lovely time today, and I appreciate. I appreciate you. I appreciate oh. you. I appreciate you. I appreciate oh, you most of all, Egbert. Like, but don't tell anyone else. Oh, oh. okay. Does that mean I have fewer spell slots? Yeah, you have two yeah. spell slots now. Oh man, all right. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're, in, you're an honorary warlock stuff. in my mind, so Corazon. Thanks, Prudence. <laughs> and if I learned anything today, it's not to pour water on an oil fire. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, that concludes the tale of like the third or fourth most reprehensible thing the Oxventurers Guild has, has done, maybe. So uh, yeah, thank you all for coming. Um, that's it from me. But what's that, Andy? You look like you have something to say. Do, Do you? you? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't think so. <laughs> yes, no, thank you so much for coming. Um, please do subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, youtube.com forward slash Oxventure. We're going to be starting a series of Deadlands soon, which is a Wild West horror themed uh, RPG. 
And as a treat for Oxventure fans who are here today, we have uh, the official artwork for the Deadlands series, which we're going to pop up here on the screen so you folks can see it for the first time. There it is. Oxventure presents Deadlands. It's coming soon. See if you can figure out who's playing who. It's pretty obvious. Yes, <laughs> extremely <laughs> obvious who is playing who. Well, uh, yeah, look forward to that. That's coming this summer. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate all of you, and we will see you next time.